I just drink wine. Welcome to the wine situation. Welcome to the wine situation. Sean's whining already. What if I did the whole show of whining? I would kill you. <laughs> the wine situation. <laughs> we talk about wine. I would get rid of you, find another co-host, yeah. and we would whine about you. They kind of sound like Gilbert Godfrey. No. Mm, I like wine. I don't like, the, like driving traffic. So we take uh, people's wines with H's and we pair them with wines because we know so much shit yeah. about wine. Yeah, we take people's like wine. And we turn them into delicious, like, sip, sip, sip. We turn them into cheers, cheers, cheers. fermented grape juice. Mm-hmm. That's what we do. Because we're like Jesus. Because we are like Jesus. <laughs> but with wine. You guys, this is like church. <laughs> Welcome to church. Welcome to church. If you're listening to this on a Sunday. You are about to get... Namaste. <laughs> Oh, no. You're about to get namaste I'm multi-denominational. <clears throat> you know, I embrace all cultures, religions, and all that kind of stuff. I'm I not mean, afraid. You're not. You shouldn't be. No one should be afraid. We discussed this on our last episode. You should not be afraid. About, about not being afraid? I think. I think we did. I think yeah. we did. Yeah. Well, we feel like slightly qualified to talk about wine mm-hmm. because, you know, if you're just plucking this podcast out of the ones we've done before. Like I've said before, fuck you. <laughs> 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 Ellen is always aggro on the second show. She gets a little more aggro on the second show. Um, uh, the best way. This is episode 10, guys. But um, bam. Double rawr, digits. Double digits. One, zero, ten. Uh, 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 doing our, it. Our guest is like doing a shoulder dance. Yeah. And we can't wait because to Because I don't you. know if I'm like supposed to talk yet. So I'm just. Oh, I'm, I forgot to tell you. Yes, we're going to do a little. Because I called you out because you're like, she's doing. We're, we're, yeah. So. The intro is lame. No, this no it's lame. great. I love hearing all about church. <laughs> church. And, um, namaste. And namaste. We were, well, I was supporting you. Excellent. Praise hands. No. But um, I'll be quiet. Praise hands. We, we were about to, you should feel good. You're in good hands. We know a lot about wine. Sean uh, helped open Bar Covell. He is the Guess wine whisperer. He knows what people want to drink magically. And also he worked with Gregory Condes, so he has all the wine knowledge to guide you through this journey. And Ellen has passed tests, the W sets. She mm-hmm. also is a lifelong goth. So, you, <laughs> so she understands. And as I said, the Dark Lord Trent Reznor taught me. Yeah. So <laughs> she, when you black out, yeah. she knows how to direct yeah. you uh, There's like a lot of black magic voodoo wine knowledge Mm. that she has that I don't even know about. I can't tell you. you I just use it. Because you're under her spell. I'm under her (laughs) spell. (laughs) (laughs) If the world were under my spell. Her pentagram is Uh, real strong. So our guest, I'm so excited that you could do this. Carla Mosley. You, uh, I know her as Carla Mosley, my friend Carla, and you might know her from The Bold and the Beautiful. You might know her from uh, from her upcoming web series web <laughs> wedlocked that they are getting ready to shoot she's beautiful i've seen her on stage she's a phenomenal actress we're buddies we're buddies, buddies. Yeah. <laughs> we were met through a friend of a friend but mm-hmm. you are one of the most like giving mm-hmm. wonderful people so thank you I'm just like excited you could be here because i was like so sh- shocked when i asked you and it was like this is los angeles where people usually reschedule at least three times <laughs> and it worked out on the first like hey are you free next week i am yeah. which is amazing well, my friend. If you guys friend, want Carla Mosley, get her now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my friend so calls me the goddess of yes. And I oh. have a, I, it's it's problematic. I'm like, yes. And then oh. I'm like, what am I doing? And I didn't feel that way about this, except that I don't drink very often. So as I was saying uh, before, I, I hope that I stay awake I uh, and stay coherent through <laughs> the our discussion. We will not send yeah. you to Snoop Dogg. She's going to a Snoop Dogg concert after yeah. this. We won't send you to Snoop if you're not coherent. Okay, we'll call you an Uber most. I was gonna, thing. I, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, you gotta be really sober when you go Super to a Snoop sober. concert. <laughs> He's definitely oh. doing breathalyzers at the door. Oh, dude, for sure. Yo, 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 is everyone sober in the house? Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look out for oh, that. Oh, Snoop. Mm-hmm. Well, um, yeah, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, I just you. met you, and you already are living up to all these great things I've heard. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> don't lie. Sean, I'm putting you up to opening wine duties while Carla tells us about her wine with an H. Okay. So. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> guys, it's going to get heavy. It's really personal, you guys. You it's got, really serious. If you're driving, pull over. <laughs> Sit down. Get if you're holding a baby, put it in its crib. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if you're drinking, pour another drink. Yes. Um, I hate dress codes mm-hmm. of any <laughs> kind. If I'm naked, I shouldn't have to put on a fucking sock. If I am. <laughs> 
wearing a dress, I should not have to put on sweatpants to go to the gym. If I'm wearing shorts, I should not have to put on a gown to go to a red carpet. Mm-hmm. I, it, so I think that I should if be able wearing to... wearing a skirt, you should be able to get on a bike. That's... Oh, thank mm-hmm. you. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Without harassment. Ah, yes. I just think that any kind of imposition on my general comfort, specifically around looks, is uh, particularly irksome. Yeah, and you are someone who's in public eye yes, frequently, sometimes. so you probably have to deal with this even more than a lot of us. I do, and again, it goes back to that's so big glass. You know, we, we, we got time. We, we got time. Yeah. The goblets are deceiving. <laughs> they are, they are actually. I wine, measured yeah. once, and it's like less than a normal glass of wine. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, yeah, they just, just they're they're chunky, so it looks... It does feel like Games of Thrones-y. Yeah. I appreciate that. Hence the goth. Yes. Um, It smells delicious already, by the way. So, yeah, I just, I get nervous, I think is what it is. Mm. And then once I'm dressed up, particularly for events, you know, like I'll often say like, yes, of course I'll go support you at this or support you at that, you know. In fact, when you asked me what my wine was last weekend, I was going to support a dear friend at an event. And it was like in that moment that I was like, but that means... I have to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That means I have to shower. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like what the hell? You know. So Makeup. is it more that like you're representing your career and all, and, and you have to get dressed up in this way? Like, is it more that, or is it more just like you just want to stay comfy all the time? Just yeah. generally, I want to stay comfy. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. And I definitely, but there are more. As someone who likes to stay comfortable, there are definitely more opportunities to be discouraged <laughs> from <laughs> looking <laughs> the way that I want yeah. to look. You're like, do I have to go to that premiere? Exactly. Like, really? <laughs> Exactly. To. And are these holy jeans okay? Like, like not the cool kind of holy jeans. Oh. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, especially for purposely. women, too. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, it's, well, yeah. I mean, like, That's women, the, like, getting dressed up takes so long. Like, and it's the variety, too. And then heels. Yeah. And the undergarments to go with things. Exactly. It's terrible. And then purses. Uh-huh. Heels. heels. Fucking heels. Kills. Fucking heels. It's the heels worst. Kill you. Yeah, I know. Yep. In fact, um, tonight, uh, the person that I'm going with was like, dress code, comfortable, sexy. And I was like, that does what? not exist for women. Oh, <laughs> like, my. That yeah. doesn't Ex- exist. That leads us into so many of the questions um, we had. But yeah, oh like comfortable, sexy, like which I feel like that's like the L.A. dress code, right? It is. But for women, that is a very oh. different thing than for men. No, it's yeah. like uh, on camera when you, if you're in my world of indie film, where the person who doesn't know what they're like, well, no, I picture your character like no makeup, don't wear makeup, and I'm like, trust me, you want me to have some makeup. I'm exactly. Just, yeah. 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 I went in for something today, and they were like, mom, and I was like, you don't actually want me to dress no. like mom's dress. No. I mean, I started a production company championing women and women of color for that reason because I do, you know, like yeah. I do want to see moms in mom attire and mom mode yeah. you know and that doesn't mean to say that like once you're a mom you gotta be frumpy you know right. but it's just like it's it's real if you're yeah. up and you're you know you're driving everybody around your boobs are sagging whatever it is and you're multitasking exactly. you're figuring it out put yeah. on a few pounds like whatever you know yeah. and so I think that's really what it's about is just being able to show up as myself yeah. and so feeling like I have to put on some kind of clothing uh, <laughs> to prove to someone who they want me to be right. you know then it's like so so, yeah. And just imagine you like laying around just naked in your house all the time. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. It happens a lot. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I'm yeah. comfortable like yep. that. It's great for me. Take it. Uh, well, cheers. Let's cheers. do the cheers. Yeah. And then, we and can, then we'll uh, explain the, uh, the choice. And the choice. Cheers. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh that is good. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Oh, it's really we, uh, nice. Wow. So when I started thinking about your, at first I was thinking, oh, we'll get you casual wine. You should be able to have the fanciest wine and the nicest thing, but be comfortable. Yeah. So I, I started thinking about uh, some of the original loungers while drinking, the Romans. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they toga's probably so comfy. Yes. Toga Just party. chill out in that toga. Lie on your side. They lounge. I think the Greeks did the lounging on their sides thing too, but they didn't allow women so fuck that not that yeah. the romans had everything going for them uh the romans <laughs> support but uh but, but just so, a general so, sense of lounging and like a, a bed sheet yeah yeah that with, you've manufactured into like a right, garment but in yeah. public yeah but in Is public, in public. <laughs> <laughs> on your side like just lie down be lazy yeah yeah, yeah. And drink your fancy wine. So we decided to get some of the... I got the good stuff. You got, you the, got good, the good stuff. You actually, you really did. This is a 2010 Master Johnny Brunello di Montalcino. Mm. It's a DOCG wine, which 
means it undergoes all sorts of. We'll get into it. Like yeah, we'll get into the classifications the of. Yes, Okay, it's Doc G. Right, I just wanted to make sure I was getting it correct. Yeah, correct. Yeah, it's Italian for fancy, delicious. Fancy, delicious wine. So, so we decide to. Yeah, I first I was like, oh, should we get you in like Roman mode? Should we get wines from that region? But Tuscany, which is where Brunello de Montalcino is from, is just north of the region that Rome's in. So, mm. you know. Mm-hmm. I accept your offer. Mm-hmm. It's delicious. It really is. It's really, this is nice. Mm-hmm. So this is 100% Sangiovese from uh, Tuscany. Tuscany is like the greater state, and Montalcino is a town mm. in Tuscany. It's near Chianti. Everyone's heard of Chianti. Yeah. Um, Chianti is the same grape as this, although a different version of it, mm-hmm. um, made slightly differently, aged slightly differently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, slightly it has a really like round taste. It's it's it's. This is um, a very smooth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it fell. It sort of like fills the sides of my mouth. <laughs> it's like leathery to you. You get yeah. like leather and chocolate on this, yeah, yeah, and like yeah. black cherry uh-huh. and blackberry, yeah. and yeah. No, I love this wine. Velvety, full. Mm-hmm. To me, yeah. it's my it's really favorite cool. wine from Italy. Yeah, Brunello oh. de Montalcino. Yeah, truth be told, I'm not a you know I'm not a Barolo person as much as I'm oh. a Brunello de Montalcino guy. Yeah, I tend to be kind of a Alianico or Barolo. I I like oh. I like kind of vicious wines though. Well, you know, I'm, I hate to bring it up, but you are a goth. That's <laughs> true. I like vicious. So. Vicious in what way? Like they leave your mouth feeling a little beat up. Like mm. they're really tannic. Yeah. Like I like pretty strong tannins. I like high acid, which mm. this has. Uh, this has decently high tannins but they're rounded off and smooth and a little more this is yeah. delicious and yeah okay so i'm vegan so it's like uh i'm vegetarian like the super so. green juice of yeah. wines is what you like like no apples no apples. <laughs> yeah oh, I just like, like, I like do a lot of like juices yeah. with leafy, <laughs> leafy green exactly yeah. it's just all collard oddly enough i don't <laughs> straight collard juice i mean <laughs> oddly enough i'll take swiss chard over kale but, right, see, but there you go yeah i don't know i see where, where you're coming from no but i love this too. I mean, it just depends on your mood. Yeah. Like, I don't know that I have a favorite Italian wine. Just if someone for, you brought it up. So. Yeah. You know, I you know it's one of my more favorite Italian wines. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like so, there's all these like classifications and how they do wine in Italy. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of brought about just to ensure like quality. Like if it's going to be labeled from this region, it needs to meet its standards. So this label across the top, this is an Italian thing. And oh, oh, up, up yeah, top, this is top. generated by the government. Like oh, this wow. isn't made by like the winemaker. The, it had the little. Do we have a similar it thing here? We don't. No, mm-hmm. American. Uh, we have the AVA American yeah. Viticulture Area, which really is pretty. Pales in comparison. <laughs> yeah. It basically just it means seventy five percent of the wine has to be from that region oh, to, okay. to get that label. Um, but they have for every different DOC. DOC is the lesser version of DOCG. For every DOC or DOCG, it's different standards for different regions. Like some of them are like you have to age it this long. Some of them you can only produce this many liters of juice per this many grapes. Some are you have to plant at certain d- densities. Some they have to have a certain alcohol level. I think. It has to be like minimum 12.5 ABV on Brunello de Montalcino. So different mm-hmm. regions have very strict standards. And yeah. then a DOCG, you were about to explain with the label. Um, oh, uh, a DOCG is just basically the the most, the highest quality. Mm-hmm. So like there's three. There's DO, there's DOC, and there's DOCG. Mm-hmm. DO being like, it means like like destination of origin. Like mm-hmm. it yeah. means it's guaranteed There's also from that IGT, place. which is a whole oh, yeah. other thing. Oh, yeah, it's also IGT. There's so <laughs> many, you guys. Italy's confusing. Italy is just <laughs> Full, wine nerds. Yeah, it's full of like wine nerds with yeah. acronyms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. It's just Italian acronyms. Get get into it. So DOC is like controlled destination of origin. So yeah. it means it's slightly more controlled. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually doing the English version. Okay. Yeah. And then DOCG means that it's guaranteed destination of origin. Okay. So guaranteed meaning that there's the G a... is garantita in Italian. <laughs> so it's like um, if there's like a you, if group it were of people like that ten years it. ago and you were doing ecstasy, yeah. you would know that like it was pure. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's more like if there was like a governing body. I see. But the U.S. government uh-huh. paid to test the ecstasy yeah. to Got make it. to ensure that yeah. it's 
yeah. and they were like, MDMA. this is guaranteed. Yeah, this is pure MDMA, and this is not cut with, you know, I mean, I guess it's a little with the tap battery. Yeah. <laughs> What's happening with marijuana? And- <laughs> oh. Right, yeah. But yes, XT, it's this wine, Italian wine, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah, so if you were partying um, in the late This is like Molly 90s, in a glass. <laughs> <laughs> if you were hanging with D-Light. Exactly. The, and who at wasn't? The, at the recently reopened Studio 54. <laughs> <laughs> at some club party. No. Oh god. Yeah. Oh my. That's, oh. You just, I got a flood no, of I memories that. from oh, that yeah, time exactly. in my life. I'm bringing it back. Bringing people. it back. Bringing it back. I went to art school. Okay. I know what it's about. What's the name of the D? Sorry, now I'm fixed on D Light Lady Lady. Oh. D Light Lady. Oh, I, yeah. think I, I Lady never knew names. She's still around. She. The redhead. Zig. Zig's going to the. I know. Zig's come going on. for it. Groove is He's in on the a Google. House. Oh. Groove oh is yeah. In the house. Oh yeah, sing it, girl. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, we, we all stop. I didn't know. I think I always said groove is in the high for a really long time. Lady Miss Claire. Yes, I knew it was Lady. Groove is in the heart. That is a great song. Dude, iconic. Yeah. Much like this Brunello and Montalcino. That's right. It is. Yeah. It takes you there. Takes you there, it does. Um, yeah. Now I'm thinking of that movie Threesome, and they use that song like, yeah. "We'll take you there." Oh yeah, Threesome Party because Monster. Because we were just having a '90s flashback. Yeah, I know. We we're qualify gonna, as millennial. Yeah, we're gonna watch singles right, right we're now. We're just hanging oh, on. Yeah. I think I'm out of it. How old? Oh, technically, we not, are we not no, no. To talk about we're that? I'm okay. I'm just like one year minus two days older than you. Oh, okay. So are we hanging on? <laughs> That's the most cryptic way anyone has ever talked about their say age. Your birthday without saying my birthday i don't care okay oh i don't care either okay yeah. august 29th 1980 yeah. and i'm august 27th 1981 cheers, cheers. Oh, cheers. Uh, okay so but my but are we hanging on <laughs> is what, what <laughs> technically we qualify as millennials we but do. barely yeah, yeah. barely yeah 80 i guess is a technical cutoff yeah. and it there drives okay. my my niece crazy <laughs> oh no yeah. how old she my, well my step niece i guess you're saying mm-hmm. but she's 20 Huh? Oh, oh, and God. she's like, there's no way. Yeah, she's like, you are not a millennial. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's there's right a couple of millennials I hang mm. out with from time to time, and I'm just like, whoa. It yeah. is a different world. Yeah, <laughs> it's a different world, yeah. yeah. It really is. Yeah. But we can still claim it. That's right. <laughs> we can still claim it. <laughs> no we can claim gonna... that and Shira. Yeah, exactly. So. No one's going to stop me from claiming it. <laughs> Claimer's going to claim it. <laughs> Claimer's got to claim. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> um, do we talk about the grape? The yeah. grape Sangiovese. So close to, well, did you say Chianti? Chianti yeah. is okay. in, in Tuscany. Chianti is another DOC in that region, yeah. Mm-hmm. Chianti Classico. Chianti An Classico. even smaller area within. What else is there that they have there? They have Vino Nobile di Montepulciano is another Tuscan DOCG. I believe it's a DOCG. It might just be a DOC. No, I think it's a DOCG. DOC? I think it's a DOCG. I'm, I'm going to go with I you on that. Think. I don't know. For Basically, God. Tuscany, there's a lot of wine being made in Tuscany. Great. And it's a lot of it made with the grape called Sangiovese. And oh. there's a lot of not great Sangiovese. Like, yeah. there's a lot of not great. Like, Chianti got a pretty bad rap mm. for a while. Yeah, they're trying to bring it back. Yeah, I mean, they're getting higher standards. I think Chianti's just a DOC in Chianti Classico, which has to be from, like, a, the specific classic region on the top of a hill or somewhere on a hill. It's usually better if it's in a hill in Italy. Mm. Is what I've yeah, deduced. better on a hill, guys. All my wine studies. Because of sun or just reputation? Actually, yes. St- uh, sun and... Uh, uh, altitude moderates temperature. Temperature, oh, okay. yeah, and drainage. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. So mid slope tends to be like best place for mm-hmm. a lot of places. And southwest on facing, I guess. Uh, what is it? South or southern. Southern, s- southern facing is like best. I the think. best, yeah. In the northern hemisphere, in the southern hemisphere, it's northern facing. Yeah. But there are no hills in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> or it's no, I never hear no hills in Australia. No, no, there. I just <laughs> was saying, I don't ever hear people talking about Uh-oh. altitude. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, we have a fact checker exactly. here. Someone's going to call us out on our facts. Um, Listen, uh, okay. There's a lot of Not valley. One there's hill. a lot of valley wine. <laughs> Actually, no, I lied. There's a lot of valley wine being made in, in Australia. Like, Europe. oh my God, there's so many. <laughs> oh my God. What I'm saying is when it's really hot, altitude's important because it gives you better, cooler temperatures. That makes sense. For real, like yeah. circus real. liquors. In, or where if it's too cold, valley. it faces the sun at a better angle so it gets hotter. Okay. Yeah. Do you think the um, Chianti devastation? <laughs> <laughs> the great Chianti Ooh, fest. The great Chianti really? devastation. You guys, what happened is Silence of the Lambs came out. That's what I was going to say. Oh, 
Like, That's yes. hundred percent what I was gonna say. Wow, you guys are in tune. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean people thought of it as something that that's I why I think eat. of it. No, I, I did too for a long time. Okay. But is it delicious? Well, it can be great. Yeah. It's great. Well, like Sanjavese a red sauce, it's like the best thing. Okay. You have a red sauce and a sandwich. A good Chianti, mm. a good Chianti can be delicious. Yeah. It's the same grape species as as this slightly different uh, variety of it. We'll, we'll talk about that more later. Yeah, we can talk about it right now. So, okay. like grapes have like clones, uh-huh. but like genetically they can be the same. But then there's different clones of that exact grape, and they Ellen, have different qualities. Yeah, different right. qualities. Ellen had the best way to describe it. I think it's Thank like, you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. like your brother, or your sister is obviously your brother and sister, but they have like a different eye color. Okay. Yeah. So you have like the same genetic makeup, but mm-hmm. except with wine, they can take your brother and cut his arm off and grow another brother. Mm. So it's like, <laughs> Soon, <laughs> no, this is Soon. that's what happens. You too can have a brother uh, of your arm. Yeah. <laughs> no, what happens oh, with wines is there's a type of grape, and it's genetically that grape. And sometimes they'll notice, oh, this particular bush happens to, in this region, it helps that it ripens earlier, Mm -hmm. and that's a slightly different clone. And so to recreate the exact same wine, you have to, you can't take the seed from the grape. You have to uh, cut off, uh, you have to do a, not a grafting, a uh, cutting. Cutting. Clipping. Yeah, you have to do a cutting of that bush and plant that, and Mm -hmm. then you can get, I'm simplifying this way too much, but then that's the only way to get that exact. So that's how different clones are developed, because sometimes people will be like, oh, there happens to be this is growing better for this region or something. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So Brunello di Montalcino is a slightly different clone from Chianti, but it is the same genetically, the same grape. But it's both. Yeah, they're both genetically Sangiovese, but they're a slightly different clone. Mm, so, yeah. like for like for me, the best are, like I'm, like when I think about it, I think about like Vermentino. Mm-hmm. Like these are white wine varietals. Mm-hmm. Vermentino and Pagato, genetically the same thing. But Pagato, like when it starts to ripen, gets a little like speckledness because mm-hmm. Pagato means like pigeon egg. So, like, that's a weird characteristic that happens with this clone. But genetically, it's the same grape. And then taste-wise, you get a little more salinity from Pagato than you would from, like, Vermentino. Mm. And it's weird that it has this different expression while it's ripening. It gets a speckled thing. So, But it's the same exact genetic grape, hence the clones. Mm -hmm. So this is a a clone. I feel like it's maybe slightly, it's a pretty thin-skinned grape still, but it's, like, slightly. Yeah, but I feel like Brunello's tend to be a little more tannic, a little little fuller. I think this clone is a little more full, yeah. Yeah, a little more full and general uh, and so they the, actually the, thought um, it was a different grape entirely for a uh, long time the thickness of the skin is mm-hmm. what in red wines it creates can, the the flavor uh, or like the fullness it, it's part of it mm. yeah yeah it imparts a lot of color and a lot of tannin mm. yeah mm-hmm. like the skin of the grape mm-hmm. And then also like the seed or the stem too, but mostly the skin is where you get the color from. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It has more bitter flavors. Yeah, it it adds the tannin element to it. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. body can also seem fuller. Like some grapes, they let reach like fuller sugar ripeness. So Mm. there's more sugar, so more alcohol is created. And that also can make a wine feel like a heavier, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. heavier thing. A heavier thing. <laughs> heavier thing. Um, this wine wine's getting heavy. heavy. This wine tastes like a heavy thing. <laughs> uh, it's weighty. We're on an Italian <laughs> kick of heavy, heavy Italian wines here. The we Italian are. Wine. Our last episode, we we had a Lambrusco, which is was pretty full too. So mm. it's you guys are getting the Italian treatment here on yeah. the wine situation. Yeah, a lot of Italians. Mm. Italians are hanging out. Do you enjoy t- the Italian food? I do, but I, the, I'm also the but you have to dress up free. Oh, and that's right. Vegan. I know. And I know. It's it like your tough. nightmare. Well, I mean, they have some great artichoke that. salads. This is true. And uh, sauce. I love sauce. sauce. I love a good sauce. Mm-hmm. Yes. I can eat a bowl full of sauce. Exactly. <laughs> sauce bowl. <laughs> sauce bowl. <laughs> Although as a vegetarian or, you know, as a vegan, you have to be careful that they didn't use like stock right exactly yeah it's a toughie gluten-free pizza <clears throat> I, um yeah the person who did baby cakes she has a really great cookbook called bread and butter that has this vegan and i'm not gluten-free or mm-hmm, vegan mm-hmm. but this vegan gluten-free pizza that i made it's like oh, it was really good so good oh i'll check it out i actually had one today it was really good we're from whole foods of all places all right i know i feel like we always like devolve it. into talking about food, food on this podcast i know well what well, i was gonna ask in is, a great way. yeah <clears throat> so i'm going to france Huh. Next week, Ooh, France. What? I know, and then We're in France. and then Berlin. So oh, I'm going fun. to Paris and Berlin. Oh, great! Lucky. So what should I drink? Oh, anything, <laughs> anything, <laughs> all of anything. It? Yeah, it'll all be great. Okay. Yeah, in yeah, France. really. Yeah, you really can't go wrong. Okay, easy. Lyon is close by. Champagne yeah. is somewhat close by to Paris. Yeah. Um, Loire is not too far. Not, uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's not I mean, too far. all the. Th- are you gonna stay? Are you staying in Paris, the city, mostly? Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I've been I mean, to the south before. I love. But just south. like, I mean, it's gonna be so cheap and so great. Yeah. All yeah. Right, yeah. 
like the good stuff won't cost what Tons it would cost here. Yeah. Because yeah. oh, yeah. it won't have changed hands like right. five times. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Oh, no. I'm so like, you need to send us pictures of all your bottles. Okay. Mm. No, seriously. I'm like, yeah. I want to see what and you're then drinking. Also, Berlin, just like, don't be afraid of Riesling. Oh, no. Oh. You don't. have to drink a lot of Riesling there. Okay. Oh, so good. Look for so good. Riesling. If you, if you like a lighter one, look for one from like Baden. Um, mm. Or look, if it says, tro- if you like a drier wine, look for uh-huh. one that says Trocken. Trocken, yeah. Okay, because that's why I usually say, because I don't, I'm not, I don't tend towards sweet. Yeah, say okay. Trocken. Okay. But they have some beautiful sweet. Uh, the thing with Riesling is the acid's really high, which yeah. cuts through all the sugar, so it can be a little sweet, but it's still like refreshing. Mm. But if you want dry, look for Trocken or Halb Trocken. Okay. Okay. All right, yeah. but I'll try sweet. Yeah. I'll try it all. Why not? Is it? Are you going for work? Or for no. <gasps> I know. Uh, it's, it's been uh, a while. I'm really, really excited. Yeah. That's so good. <laughs> I need to go back to Europe. Mm-hmm. I haven't been in a minute. Uh, yeah. I haven't Let's either. take the it's podcast to Europe. You guys are taking the podcast to Europe. We're taking the podcast to Europe. Come on, guys. Oh, we're going with Carla to yeah. Europe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll be your, uh, we'll be your wine, uh, wine advisor. On I the need trip. that. If any winery in Italy or France or Germany wants to sponsor us yeah, mm-hmm. to come mm-hmm. out there mm-hmm. and do that. Mm-hmm. If they just want to send us some wine, that's cool too. Right, exactly. <laughs> or, yeah. just or just listen. Or just listen. Just listen to, listen to us. <laughs> no, just, I'm just... so excited for you. Like, you're going to have some so much fun. Yeah, you're yeah. going to have a great time. I'm you sound so excited. good. Jealous. Wait, next week you're going? Yes. Oh, How long okay. are you staying for? Uh, 12 days total. Oh my god. Mm. That's amazing. I know. I'm excited. Take and advantage of the summer hiatus. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm just excited to wake up and have nobody telling me what to do. Or so what to, to wear. go back to yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the French people can... You... Do I have a problem with authority? Yeah. Is that really what this yeah, is about? Yeah, you're just reacting. Well, I, know. I think a lot of times as an actor, you just spend so much time, people are like, do this, yeah, do that, yeah, do this, just, and they're like, exactly. pulling your hair, you and you're like, oh, you, you have to be there, you have to do that. And it's really hard. This is the first time in four and a half years of being on Bold. So the first week of July we're not off the full week we're off for like July 4th weekend Mm. and then we are back for two days and then we're off for the rest of the month and so this is the first time that I've taken days off. Uh-huh. And oh, it's wow. huge. Yeah, it's yeah. Huge. Because as an artist and as an actor, it's like when... When work comes, you want to be there for we, it. And also because we love it. You yeah. know, I love what I do and it's hard to turn off. But in order to do it, you got to fill the well. You yeah. Know? yeah. So yeah. it's like, it's a really big deal. Oh, there's so much... It's so things, true. So many yeah. things to fill your well. And are you, are you looking forward to... Are you an art person? Are you looking oh, forward to the Louvre and I stuff? mean, I can spend hours in mm. a museum. And yeah. I, again... Go to Musée Picasso. It's my favorite. Oh. I know. Best. And the last time I was there, I was with someone who didn't like museums. What? So I, he was what? like Don't sitting at the end. I know. Just like yeah, right. looking at this wall. Oh, God, no. That <laughs> sucks. Yeah, so Don't this go is going to be a um, very exciting oh, trip. Oh, that's so good. Mm-hmm. Um, can we talk a little bit about being on a soap and yes. like what what is that like? <laughs> and your character's yeah. groundbreaking, which got yeah. us thinking yes. about like dress codes for different people. But I yeah, was curious absolutely. To hear. Yeah, like what's your character on the show? So um, her name is Maya Avant Forrester, mm-hmm. uh, and she is a model. She's married to Rick Forrester, who's this. The Forresters are sort of the big family, and mm-hmm. the industry on the show is fashion. You know, it's like General Hospital. And your Their wedding was kind of like hospital. a groundbreaking yeah. event. Yeah. So so, um, so two years into Maya being on the show and, and developing this romance with Rick, um, which of course was not a straight line because it's soap. Uh, <laughs> she, you uh, died a few times. Right, exactly. We discover that um, she's trans mm. and that she she transitioned from M to F, so male to female, mm-hmm. you know, in body. Was that intimidating? Because you're a cisgendered female. Mm-hmm, was- I am. It was. Not because I was afraid to play the role. Well, yeah. Well, not it's hard I, uh, the f- as an actor, I imagine to. Well, that wasn't jump it. Into. I just really wanted to do the best job. Right. Yeah, that's and, what. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. like sensitivity. Yeah. And also, as an African American performer, I know how important it is for that that we tell our own stories. Mm-hmm. And so it also felt like, should I be telling this story? Oh. Why am I, you know, in this body being asked to tell this story? Mm. And so I was really conflicted, but I also kind of embrace that did as much research as I could you know I am still I'm just so grateful to be an ally yeah. and I have learned and grown so much yeah. from yeah, playing this role like I really can't tell you how much it's changed me right. um, do you have fans sometime who come up and like like yeah. it's so great to see me represented you know yeah and that means a lot and I think that the gift of the way that this story was told you know soaps 
often meet conservative audiences yeah. Yeah. Um, and older audiences and, you know, audiences that, that might not understand what, it, I mean, a lot of it yeah. was people just going, I don't know what this is. I right. don't understand yeah. what that, you know, because people had grown to love Maya over the two years that she was on the show, if they suddenly had, you know, feelings about her or, you know, hatred toward her, they had to look at why. Yeah. yeah. And oh, so yeah. it's like in life, you know, when, when we have to face ourselves and face our prejudices and, mm -hmm. you know, even myself in educating myself had to face certain um, stereotypes that I, or beliefs that I had. Of course, yeah. um, and so I think it's, it's a really important story and I'm proud of the way we told it. And she's now married right. to her partner. The first trans wedding? Yeah. Yeah, on a network a, TV. Yeah, wow. yeah. and um, and she was the first trans series character, the series regular on on network TV. Wow. So you know, my hope is that now it will open the door for people to be able to tell their own stories. Yeah. You know? And do you feel like they did it in a way that was respect, like, 100%. respectful? hundred percent. That was it wasn't the wasn't like only sensationalizing way that it. I would have signed on to do it. Right. Like, yeah. Because I would imagine for, you're at first you're like, what? Yeah. Like, are you just going to like make this is like a clown? Is it going to be a joke? Is, is it a joke? Is, and yeah. they took it incredibly seriously. Wow. Right. And we worked very closely with Glad. And, yeah. um, you know, and I made sure Janet Mock, who I love, um, is a trans activist and journalist and just amazing human being. And I really wanted to go on her show. One, because her book changed my life, um, reading her her memoir. Yeah. Um, and she actually just came out with another one. But also because I knew she would ask hard questions. Yeah. And it's like I just wanted I wanted the community to know that we that we are serious and that we're willing to like put our feet to the fire. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. That's yeah. so great. I want to support you in that and just letting you know. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> support coming from this side yeah. of the table. I appreciate it. Very cool thing. Um, yeah. Well, let's talk about some wine. We'll do some yeah. questions. Have you yeah, heard the? You, have you listened to the podcast? You just gave you. Yeah, I haven't. I just learned about it last. Yeah, time. I just we, told you like she. We are she brand just, new. I just hit you up, and I was so shocked that you were like, "Okay." Yes. I was like, "Yes, amazing." Yes. Um. So at the end of every episode, we do a lightning round where we oh. ask you some wine trivia. Don't worry, we've been making increasingly. <laughs> we've been doing. <laughs> sometimes it's really hard. Sometimes it's very easy. So I'm, I'm, know what I'm you're setting get. my bar really low. I expect to get zero. So here we go. <laughs> If I get one, it's a win. Let's go. Fantastic. <laughs> there we go. Fabulous. Okay. Uh, so the answer to this question has been told. Which question? The first it one. But it told. hasn't been told in this context. Just know that it's okay. out there. Okay. What uh, year did Brunello de Montalcino become a DOCG? Oh. What year? We wouldn't know this. If we hadn't been researching. Yeah, if we hadn't researched, we would have But it's been told today. We talked about we it. We mentioned that it. year. I didn't know there was a quiz. There's a quiz. Two of us have this year in common. In 1980? Yes! Yes! Oh, you got it! High I five. mean, you got it. I no, did you got that. It. Yes. I'll take it. I'll 100 take it. 100 points. 100 points. <laughs> 100 points. Yes. Okay, because I uh. remember birthdays. <laughs> Go on. Sometimes the answers to the questions are in the podcast, That's guys. Right. You know? Like little hidden clues. Like hidden clues. <laughs> like like this geocaches. One we never, yeah. what, what I have that I was going to ask oh, next. Oh, were you going to uh, ask? I, I was going to ask this oh, one. Oh. Um, this is, this actually, I would have known, like a lot of our questions the last two episodes, I'm like, oh, we had to look that up, but we are trying to get a little more challenging in our, our questions. So what clone, we talked about clones, mm -hmm. what clone of the Sangiovese grape, take a splash more, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, uh, it's what? More wine. Just, just, just that's good. Um, <laughs> Carla, are you okay? Yeah. Oh, no. She's what? I'm, I'm Carla's wondering. in her PJs over there, you guys. She has, she's, I'm naked. Yeah, she's, she's naked. She's wearing a sock. Well, she she felt like she needed to match the togas, the, the revealing togas that Sean and I are lounging on our elbows in right now. We have Zig, our, our sound guy, with the, the grapes nearby. Yes. He's, He's, the like, grapes. Oh, yeah. He's what, nodding. What's the name of the clone of the Sangiovese grape? So originally, um, they thought Brunello was a different grape. Uh-huh. Yeah, and uh, then they finally figured out it is a clone of the Sangiovese grape. What did they name that clone? They should have just named it Brunello, but they didn't. Brunella. No. <laughs> they should have. They should have named it Madame Brunella. Uh, no. Go on. But I like your answer. Brunella. 
That's what I'm calling this from now Correct. on. No, Sangiovese Grosso. Ah. Grosso. Grosso. Yes, they thought this was a different grape. It was, it was no, a no, slightly fatter grape and yeah. they named it Grosso. Oh, they like, but chances. not Gordo. Is it, what's, is Grosso bigger? I, I just that totally made that up. I, I don't know, but maybe. that's interesting. I don't know Italian. Gordo, no, yeah, Gordo is, is yeah, in Spanish. It's Spanish but, yeah, fat, so I'm wondering. Yeah. I feel like Grosso is like bigger. Yeah, bigger out there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They named it. They're literal. Yeah, very literal. I'm going to go right into the next question. Just for fun. Because we're batting a hundred. So when oh, we were yeah. <laughs> no, you you batted a hundred and ten no, on the first question. I did. So remember we were talking about uh, DOC, DOCG, stuff like that, mm-hmm. like the ecstasy. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. In yeah. case you forgot. Yeah. So it's a government agency that regulates wine and how it's produced in different regions. Yes. So if you break these rules or laws, <laughs> you can actually go to jail for this oh, as a winemaker. Like yeah. and being an imposter. And being an imposter. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So what is the maximum jail sentence you could be sentenced to for breaking a Beer. DOC or DOCG? Like I said, we've been years. Doing... <laughs> 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 you're, like, you're like death. <laughs> death for wine. <laughs> Like she I said, was <laughs> so since 50 years. I mean, they take this thing seriously they in do. Italy. In they Italia. do, yeah. Their wine, especially. Okay, three. Six, and you're never allowed to drink again. No, just the sixth part. <laughs> but it that is, would yeah. be worse than death. Yeah. It would be, oh six, my gosh. Six years. Wow. They'll throw you in jail for six if you years if you don't follow their standards follow and their label standards. it as such. Crazy, but right? But you know what? If you make a lot of money, it might be worth it to you. Mm. Well, if you're a hustler. That's true. <laughs> it depends on it. Are you fined as well? So the thing well, is. I'm sure. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a huge disgraced. deal. And well, then your yeah. family, yeah, you know, and you can't, won't yeah. make wine again. And yeah. My family. And it's, it's like you might as well, rather than calling it a Brunello and getting six years, there is sort of a declassified Brunello di Montalcino. Not uh. declassified, just a lower, lower class. Yeah. Like, not It's not tested by the uh, Garantita staff that puts their stamp on like they did this bottle. Um, there's a version of this wine from the same grape made very similar ways uh, that has a name. We are curious if you could like, guess what it was. Oh, that was a question. Yes, it was a question. <laughs> I, uh, eventually, it was a question. Yeah. Eventually, I got to a question. Uh, Go get. No, like, what's the, what's what's the, the pedestrian the... version of a Brunello de Maltacino? Okay. Like, like what's like? What's the affordable? What's the like? Like, the there's another basis. name for wine from the same region. From the same that's grape. That's not called same grape. Brun- it's not called Brunello de Maltacino. It's called. Uh, maybe Bla, Bla, Bla it's called de Maltacino. Peter de Maltacino. <laughs> Close. Right. No, seriously. Like it's Rosso. Oh, okay. uh, like the Rossi Posse. Yes, like the Rossi Posse. Got it. Precisely. <laughs> Rossi Posse. Yes. Exactly uh, like that and ecstasy. Yes. Or or Peter de Montalcino. <laughs> Peter de Montalcino. <laughs> or yes. Stuart. Exactly. Stuart de Montalcino. <laughs> Oh, I love Stuart DeMaltino. The American Lady. cousin. Lady. <laughs> so basic. Lady, what's her face from Delight of Montalcino? That's right. <laughs> that's my mm-hmm. version. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, those are my questions. Well, oh, are we done? <laughs> Those, those were the, like the quiz questions. Those are my quiz questions. Uh, my we, quiz questions. We have like one sort of real talk question okay. we ask yeah. at the end of every, which is like you cannot get this wrong because we don't know the answer. We don't know the answer. Do you oh. want to ask it this time? I feel like I've wanna, asked it. Yeah, I've asked it. Every well, time. it was you who thought we should do this, and yeah, I was like, but you know, we're like, Cause, ep- cause like we, it's episode ten now, so that we are yeah. well, we are deep in the river. Okay. I mean, this podcast of is. Truth. We ask you to come in yeah. with a <laughs> wine. What's annoying? We worried it was going to get like a little negative, but we want to know what brings you joy right now. Mm. Just some joy. My niece. Oh, <gasps> yeah, yeah. She. Um, How old is she? She will be five on September first. She's another Virgo. Excellent. But she, um, she was born with hypoplastic left heart syndrome, which means the left side of her heart didn't develop. And a month ago, Monday, this past Monday, she got a heart transplant. <gasps> And she is like the most incredible little Aww. girl. And every time she takes a picture, she's smiling. Aww. And she's just, I adore her. So, yeah, she brings me nothing but joy. Brothers, child, sister. My sister. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So I'm totally. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I appreciate it. I have, a niece, a, I have a niece who's four, too. Yeah. Oh, so oh my know. God. I know that. Yeah. Um, I can't even imagine. Yeah. I'm she's a teacher. So glad she's to hear that. 
that happened. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Let's bring some joy for that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Um, do you want to tell people before we cut off about like your upcoming web series? <laughs> oh sure. No, I'm just like, segue. That I'm like, segue. like, anyway. I'm like speaking I of hearts. hearts. Not that I'm hard to get emotionally. Babies <laughs> getting <laughs> hearts yeah. transplanted Things in their were bodies. Like winding down. I didn't want to just be like, let's Who say cares? goodbye. What's no. the no, point of anything? Exactly. I, everyone Who gives was a shutting shit? up. Then, well, I'll tell you, Lily loves TV. <laughs> She's in a hospital bed, and all she does Whoa. is watch like Blaze, I didn't know the how to monster watch. trucks. You guys, no, no, I didn't no, know no, how to watch. Oh, I'm like, no, Ellen, I'm not giving you a hard time. Of course, time. we I'm had sorry. to give you shit, you but it's only shit. because you're awesome. No, but you, okay, but like, it was coming from a lovely place. No, it was coming from love. Was the, yeah. We're trying to no, wind things up so you no, can go see Snoop Dogg. No, no, it's great. And honestly, like, I when I tell you she brings me joy, she does. Oh, yeah, it's like it's a crazy thing to hear, but she is oh, absolutely unbelievable, like sunshine. Yeah. Planet, you so know, amazing. and so yeah, so web series. I just wanted to give you, yeah, yeah. yeah so um, yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, I started a production company called One to One Productions with my dear friend Tina Huang, and oh. yes, yeah, no, Wait, she was on Rizzoli and Isles for a long time, yeah, but she's she's amazing, and um, and we champion women of color in front of and behind the camera, and so we teamed up with my friend Lawrence Saint Victor, um, in his production company. We wrote together. We both been on soaps together for years and we wrote a series years ago called Wedlocked um, and we just did like five episodes because it was kind of before web series were a thing mm-hmm. yeah. and so we were like oh, let's put some things on the internet and, yeah. but it keeps <laughs> yeah. coming up but like people keep asking about yeah. it and it's we say it's like a black mat about you um, it's really <laughs> nice. fun and nice. Lawrence and I are just silly and sweet and, um, and so we play like a young married couple and it's about a married couple without kids and what that's like and it's out now or so we just did it. You can see the old episodes, but okay. I warn you, my hair is um, like circa 1995. Disclosure: hair is yeah, exactly. a thing. <laughs> but um, don't but, look and, at the hair. Carla exactly. never looks anything but perfect, <laughs> <laughs> even when she's in a toga like she is right exactly. now. <laughs> <laughs> even she's, my especially when she's toga. naked like she is right yeah. now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and her, she's, um, wearing, she's wearing a sock. In my birthday suit. Uh, in her sock. <laughs> yes. So, um, so it come. We are gonna shoot it over. My birthday weekend in August, and cool. then it will be coming out like within the next year. So oh take gosh. a yeah. But um, if you go on Seed and Spark, which yeah, I don't know, I know how that. many people are like listening who make films and things, but I'm guessing you know if they're friends of yours, they might. Yeah. Um, but they're a really dope crowdfunding place for for films specifically, and I'm like, like they're not paying me to say this, but <laughs> no, just, I've heard they're. I've been meaning to go. Don't they yeah, have, like, like also meeting? run by women yeah. and yeah, like super into women. diversity, but also they just really support you through the process so the, plugging them because I just think they're great yeah. and um, yeah but we're on if you go to their page you can find us there and see a little a little teaser awesome yeah. well I look forward to seeing it you're so lovely it was so great to meet you I'm oh so my gosh like you're amazing guys. absolutely thank you for inviting so me so great uh, I'm sorry I didn't know more but um, no no I provide no. metaphors and entertainment <laughs> <laughs> That's all we ask out of our guests is metaphors and entertainment. entertainment yeah, just like delight. <laughs> if you don't have that, you're out. Yeah. Ecstasy. And ecstasy. Um, well, cheers, everyone. Cheers. Here's to Snoop Dogg. Yes. And here's to your niece. And yes, your niece. Lilia. Lilia. Salute Lilia. to Lilia. Glass. 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 Listening. Thanks for listening. You can please, please, please go and, and check out the iTunes where you can hit subscribe and you can like hit other little buttons that allow you to leave little reviews of us. Yeah, you guys can do so much with a click of a button. It's true. You can go on the Instagrams. <laughs> You can literally exactly. change our life with the click of one button. You have the power. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't let it go to your heads. You know, you don't have but that you much do. power. But you do. Yeah, but I mean, a good amount of power. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're being the angel and the devil on the shoulder right now. That's what I feel like. Either empowering or turning them into mm-hmm. monsters. But you guys find the mid-road. You find the middle line. Yeah, do do what you feel is right. Which yeah. should be going to Facebook and hitting the like on the wine situation page. <laughs> <laughs> or Twitter. Or, or Twitter. Instagram. All of them. All of them. Thanks to all of our supporters, all of our friends who taught us along the way. Oh, yes. The whole Covell crew. Covell 
crew. Gregory Kundas. For, mm-hmm. for, he's yeah. taught me nothing. He's Gregory, me nothing. I'm waiting for you. Yes, he will be on the show soon. Yes. And you'll meet him. And, and all of Ellen's famous teachers. The W set. The W set. <laughs> Mr. W set and Mrs. <laughs> w set. And their nephew, who was familyed into the. Anyway, <laughs> the, <laughs> oh, into You the... brought up the bastard nephew. Yeah, he knows a lot about wine, though. Yeah, I bet he does. Um, um, and our song people. Yes, song people, uh, Dr. America Comedy. And also, uh, thanks to UCB for having this lovely little space that we come into. Thank you, UCB, for With everything. Fans- yeah. For everything, True. really. Kind of. Yeah. A little bit. Speaking of UCB, up next we have Charlie Sanders and his lovely wife, Camille Knox. Yep. Sanders. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We're waiting to see if she took his name or not, but we think it's Charlie. It's it's Camille Knox and lovely husband, Charlie Sanders. Yeah. That way, too. Either way. Um, so we're super excited to have them and just really excited about summer, you know, and yeah, about... like Rosé all day. Rosé except all for day. when we're drinking white, which we're uh-huh. doing a lot of. Maybe do a chilled red, guys. Throw yeah, a, throw a throw, gamay in the fridge. Get a get a nice Cobb Franc. Get, yeah. Like a Chinon, a cold Chinon. Some Crew Beaujolais, mm. that would be gummy too, I guess. Yeah, but it'd be fancy. But it would gamay. be fancy. <laughs> Get some fancy cold gummy. Some fancy cold gummy. That's a rap song waiting to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, Doctor America, you have your next song. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much. See you next week. Bye. Bye. I just drink wine. I don't fuck with my PA. I just drink wine. I don't fuck with men and maids. Just drink wine. I don't fuck with coffee mates. I just drink wine. Give me red, white, or say, don't touch me, motherfucker. I'm a Somali yate.